Good morning and welcome to St. Joseph's Parish in Port Hawkesbury. This weekend we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent as we journey towards the coming of the promised Messiah. Today we wear our rose color as a sign of joy as we continue to journey together as a faith community. Just a few announcements. Again, if you wish to um, donate to the memory tree in memory of a loved one, uh, you can contact the parish. Again, uh, we are selling tickets. A great little stock and stuff stuffer idea uh, is that we're selling tickets on a five course dinner. Uh, I'm not cooking, I only serve. Father Conrad, is that's his specialty. Uh, great little stock and stuffer ideas. So again, if you wish one of those, see the CWL or uh, contact the parish. A reminder that uh, this Wednesday from seven to eight um, is our midweek pause. It's an opportunity to simply slow down. As I mentioned last week in the homily, just to slow down and take things easy uh, and focus on ourselves and particular our relationship with our God. Uh, Marie McNeil will be reading in a moment uh, those names uh, for our memory tree. But again, we'll just take time to prepare ourselves as we prepare to celebrate Mass together. Today we remember in a special way and pray for the deceased members of the Rudolph and Blackier families, Jack Campbell, Joyce Shannon, Belmont Shannon, Donald Hugh McDonald, Harry Kerrigan, deceased members of the Turpin and Ingram families, deceased members of the McDonald and Fougere families, Seward, Ella, Larry, and Pamela Brophy, Tara Cloak, Al Fougere, Maria and Stan Murray, Marion and Edward Chafe, Dennis Britton, Valerie McCacken Crosby, Joe Guthrow, Joe McCacken, Bill and Nina Forbrigger, Henry and Lena Slater, deceased members of the McDonald family, and deceased members of the McMullen family. <coughs> to make known your word among us, to proclaim justice, to expose sin. He came to reveal your word in our midst, unfolding a vision of eternity according to your plan of love and joy. 
He is the Word through whom the heavens were made. He is the Word through whom all life came into being. And He is the Word you sent to bring comfort to your people, to be our salvation. He embraced this world fully and brought life and light, love and laughter into dark places and death-filled lives. May this eternal saving truth be always in our hearts, so that we may always know the depth and height of your love in our lives. A mystery so deep, it is impossible to grasp, and so beautiful it is impossible to ignore. So fill us with Advent love and hope. Create in us a desire to listen to the Advent message, and a willingness to respond by reaching out to those longing for release and healing and hope. So pour forth your blessings upon us as we light these candles. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It is so lovely to see you all. I think this is probably the largest crowd that we've had in 21 months. So it's uh, lovely to look out and see, uh, see so many people here today. We gather today on this third Sunday, this Gaudate Sunday of Advent, to celebrate, to rejoice in God's promise for us. And for the times that we have failed in our duty to take up that promise, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst, and you shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in love. The Lord your God will exalt over you with loud singing on a day of a festival. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Crowds who were gathering to be baptized by John asked him, What should we do? In reply, John said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? 
He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not exhort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. As people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what a difference a week makes. Uh, last week, we might have been thinking, okay, well, the floods in BC, their own people trying to rebuild, trying to get some stuff done down north after the floods. Um, COVID seemed to be at, uh, you know, we knew it was still around and it was there, but, you know, we're all kind of planning for Christmas and, you know, we're kind of, kind of thinking, okay, maybe, 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 maybe this is maybe getting back. And then, and then even despite, you know, Omicron out there, we're kind of doing okay. Some tiny sense of normal was emerging. What a difference a week makes. Not only tornadoes in Kentucky and Tennessee, but COVID has really shockingly come quite close to home. And I think as many of us as frightened as we were 21 months ago, perhaps with one big difference this time. We're much more weary and exhausted. And I think for many people, their anxiety levels are, are rising and asking, where is it all going to end? And so last week we came to church and we had the same purple vestments on. And okay, that's the color of Advent. Yeah, we get it. We hear about the promise of God coming to be born in our lives and the prophet Baruch and the Gospel of Luke were trying to stir us up to some sort of hope and perhaps we got it. But times are challenging even for believers. But what a difference a week makes. This week, to kind of rise us out of perhaps our stupor, invading our lives with a blare We've changed colors. For some, this is a shocking pink. It's not pink, it's rose. <laughs> but it's meant for one thing and one thing only, to wake us up, that something is happening here. Despite all of what the world is throwing at us, something is happening. This is not ordinary time. And in the midst of our difficulties, our worries, our fears, our anxieties, we are visually challenged, but orally challenged by our liturgy to see God in breaking in the midst of our lives, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. This third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudate, Rejoicing Sunday. And the Word of God is inviting us to set aside, or at least carry, our fears and anxieties to receive God's astonishing gift of His Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. All of the scriptures today have taken, they're totally very different. They are rose in their words and rose in their intent. 
and they are designed to invade us with a different perspective. Zephaniah urges the people of Israel. What? What does he say? Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. Fear not, O Zion, and do not be discouraged. That their deepest longings of those people, as for ours, were to be fulfilled by something the people could never imagine. A tiny child in Bethlehem, a backwater place to poor unknowns. St. Paul tells the people of Philippi, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again in case, in parentheses, in case you don't get it, I tell you again. Rejoice because the Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, ah, what's the catch? By prayer and petition. And with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Rooting ourselves in the one who has already come to save us and relieve us from every fear and anxiety and worry. Rejoice in that. We've already been given the gift. The Lord is near. And John the Baptist, calling people to repentance as he points humbly to Jesus as the Messiah, who reveals the face of God's love and mercy. That's our situation. That's what it means to be this person of faith. It doesn't mean that we don't have all of the worries of the world, but we have a different vision. We're all encouraged to wear the rose. It doesn't come comfortably to some of us. But that's the invitation. That's the power of Jesus Christ in our midst. Say to the darkness, we beg to differ. So as we continue our Advent preparations, may we replace those fears and anxieties that are weighing us down with some joyful expectation that God chooses to reveal God's own nature and his own love in the light that Jesus brings to the darkness of this world. And we say, speak to me, Lord. I need to hear your word. I need that to touch my heart. But this is the unique this year, it's not very often that this coincides that tomorrow, so we're thinking this is the anticipatory mass for Sunday. Sunday tomorrow is also the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I'm not sure if any of you have a particular devotion to the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, but it's also the national day in solidarity of prayer and solidarity with our First Nations people. The appearance of Mary in 1531 to a poor indigenous peasant named Juan Diego, who was roaming the Mexican hillside to go to his dying uncle, was carrying so much personal sadness at this, with this uncle that he loved so much. He was so burdened. But it was more than that. He was carrying almost the weight of his people. This was about 10 years after the Spanish conquest of Mexico where the whole nation, their gods, their traditions were all torn down. And Mary appearing as his lady of Guadalupe, hears Juan Diego's cries when she appears. And she brings him and his people the same message that we hear in today's readings. The prophet Zephaniah says, shout for joy, the Lord is in your midst. What does Mary tell Juan Diego? I will give the peoples my love and compassion and my help. You are not alone. Her message continues to echo what we hear John the Baptist say today, calling individuals each in their own way to act with justice. To Juan Diego, she speaks almost as much as God speaks to Moses in the desert. And she says, I will listen to your cries and your sadnesses, and I will relieve and heal your pain, your misery, and your hurts. To bring people God's message of liberation, that we not be weighed down and so burdened by the cares of this world. They are important. We can't run away from it. We have to, we have to journey in the midst of it. 
But we're not without help. It's why we come week after week after week after week after week. Because we can't do it on our own, and we know that. So we need these wake-up calls to remind us of who we are and whose we are. We're living in the most challenging times that any of us really have ever witnessed. The emotional, spiritual, and economic costs of COVID have changed us forever, individually and collectively. Pope Francis has been saying, if we can only look at this as opportunity to do something different and to be something different as a Christian people, to recognize that we are bound together, we are so inextricably linked together as brothers and sisters across the world. And the readings today and the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, this woman who appears as this mix of cultures that's divinely imaged and fashioned, she's kind of part in, in the images of it. She's part indigenous, part European. She gave the people a new hope despite the turmoil, the pain, and the abuse that they suffered. What she really gives and what our readings today are proclaiming is a whole new vision of church. Her message gave life to the readings we hear today that God's desire is to create a community of justice and love that's deeply personal to my own individual situation, and yet it is a call to conversion for broader social change. We walk with the grace and the Spirit of God that's been given to us by our baptism, that will be strengthened with to our young people who are sitting here tonight, that will be confirmed next week. The promise of God coming into our world, into my world, into your world, into our world. But not this time as a tiny child that we can kind of kind of tuck away, haul it out at Christmas time and doesn't say, isn't that cute? But no, this time. Jesus coming in our lives is adult. And it calls for an infinite amount of trust and hope and commitment to see our world differently, to see it through the eyes and the ears and the heart and the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. It's a new vision. So what a difference a week can make with a wake-up call. The radical newness that it is what, of what is possible when we allow God to hold us and to fashion us. stand together and we profess what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We come together today trusting in God's promise of hope and renewal as we bring our prayers before our God. For all those baptized in water and anointed with the Holy Spirit. May shepherds and faithful humbly serve the world by proclaiming in word and deed the hope-filled and life-giving news of the one who is coming. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the suffering peoples of nations at war, 
May their leaders soon travel the road that leads to respect for life and enduring peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered to rejoice in the Lord. May our kindness and gentleness be known to everyone. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For blessings of prayer for and solidarity with First Nations sisters and brothers as we celebrate National Day of Prayer and Solidarity with Indigenous Peoples on Sunday. That Our Lady of Guadalupe may renew in us the gospel hope for a church rooted in compassion, respect, and regard for all people. We pray to the Lord. For all who feel overwhelmed by life, that God's message of have no fear may renew their hearts and fill their spirits with hope. We pray to the Lord for protection and healing. That God will protect the human family from the pandemic virus, heal all who are ill, and give strength to all, for, to all who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord for all experiencing loss and grief especially the family and friends of Kay White. May they experience God's comforting presence and loving support of others. We pray to the Lord. God who does great things for us and continually calls us to his own self. Fill our hearts with the same hope that filled the hearts of those awaiting Christ's coming long ago. Inspire us to keep hope alive for those who most need it. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, who is our sure and our constant hope. Amen. <clears throat> 351 in the Catholic Book of Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. By the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Wayne Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and in him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. today in support of the common good of your people. Through the power of this Eucharist in which we, all, which we all participate, unite us in Christ to you and to one another. Through the grace of the Holy Spirit, help us to live as the image of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Number 312 in the Catholic Book of Worship. <clears throat>
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we said last week, we will, uh, for the next little while, we'll continue to say the, the Synod Prayer together, and you should find those in your pews. And if there's not enough for everybody, and we've got more coming, and you can, just a way of, of sharing, I guess. So we stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All of this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for, for communion. I know it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's, it's kind of like the, the gospel, what we say all along. These little things are just little ways in which we kind of protect one another. So, so thanks for your understanding, and we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can. And we're, we're just hoping that uh, if we can do it right while we're here, then maybe we can do something in the greater in the greater world, and that we don't uh, we don't all go back into some sort of lockdown again. So this, I'm not sure any of us can really uh, can really go there at this point in time. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Just one little reminder: uh, we have our little food drive here today. And it will be here, the truck will be here again tomorrow uh, during mass time from about 9 to 11. So if, you'd, if you have anything you'd like to drop off, thank you very much. 306 in the Catholic Vocal Worship. <laughs>